This is a fight against the Wall Street privatizers and the exactly. PM yeah. carrying their water. The United States Postal Service. It's the second largest civilian employer in the country with over 600,000 workers in every corner of every state and yearly revenue of more than $67 billion. It's also the largest single unionized employer and it has a huge target on its back. Walmart stands as the largest employer and the contrast between the two couldn't be sharper. Walmart, along with the other low-wage employers like McDonald's, is a shining star of the new economy with its global sweatshop supply chain and its poverty wage workforce. We increasingly live in a Walmart economy, an economy with its own brutal logic and outcome for working people and our communities. To the corporate sharks and the anti-government, anti-labor zealots, a postal service that is legally obligated to provide not-for-profit service to all Americans is both an insult and an opportunity. Dismantling and carving up the U.S. Postal Service for the 1% is an irresistible prize. So, in November of 2013, when Postmaster General Patrick Donahoe launched a pilot program to put postal retail units in Staples stores across the country, the implications were clear. It was privatization of postal retail operations on an unprecedented scale. The Postal Service was embracing the Walmart economy, Staples style. For the first time, postal management was giving a huge national retail chain a no-bid deal to operate postal counters at more than 80 of their stores, staffed by their own low-wage, high-turnover employees, not postal employees. Think Staples isn't like the others? Think again. It's among the 50 largest low-wage employers. A 2010 report by the National Employment Law Project found Staples to be one of the worst for chronically cheating its employees out of their hard-earned wages. This Staples deal was privatization writ large, replacing living wage jobs with poverty wage jobs and transferring accountability from the American people to the corporate bottom line. At their first meeting, newly elected APWU President Mark Demonstein informed Postmaster General Donahoe of the union's fierce opposition to the program. The union insisted that if the plan proceeded, the postal counters at Staples would have to be staffed by career postal employees. The union president also asked to meet with Staples CEO Ron Sargent, a request the office supply chain rejected. Meanwhile, a fight-back strategy began taking shape at all levels of the organization to build a broad movement against the deal. Local unions across the country began visiting Staples stores where they hand-delivered letters putting Staples on notice that the APWU was about to embark on a serious campaign to win these jobs for postal employees. Protests at Staples stores in California and Atlanta, two of the four pilot areas, became a near-daily occurrence. This is just the beginning, and we want to make sure that we have a sustained protest to inform the American public that their, their post office is being dismantled piece by piece. US mail the U.S. mail is not for sale became the key slogan. The key demand? Staff Staples postal counters with highly trained uniform postal employees. Defend the people's right to services performed by employees who are accountable to them, not to the bottom line. ABWU locals reached out to other unions and the community to build a strong movement. So we envision and we plan to help build what we call a grand alliance between the people of this country and the postal workers. We must mobilize our allies and their organizations, including seniors, retirees, civil rights organizations. Building postal unity and a grand alliance with the American people had become central goals of the union and a key component of the union strategy in the Staples fight. To build that alliance, the union looks to its own heritage of unity and resolve from the 1970s strike, as well as the new upsurge in worker militancy and new models of organizing and coalition building.
From the successful plant occupation of Republic windows and doors to the uprising in Wisconsin, from Occupy to the Chicago teacher strike, from the historic cleaning workers victory against Target to the Walmart and fast food strikers, the public responded when workers took bold action and forged meaningful connections with the community to challenge the agenda of the 1%. On March 10, 2014, a significant piece of the APWU's plan for building unity was put into place with the announcement of an historic postal union alliance among the four unions of the USPS. The four postal unions stand together to end the attack, declared the agreement. We stand for a public postal service and protection of good jobs in our communities. With the new postal union alliance behind it, the APWU announced a National Day of Action to Stop Stables to take place on April 24. More APWU locals across the U.S. started organizing in a new way, creating local coalitions and alliances. Organizers were getting the word out and holding one-on-one -on -one conversations about the issues with members and supporters. Momentum began to build as new Staples actions kept the pressure on in Chicago, Seattle, Altoona, Iowa, Albany, and Orlando, Florida. People should know that corporate America is trying to privatize the Postal Service, and we as APW union members don't want to have that happen. You know, you start with Staples, next thing you know is Walmart, is, you know, any other store. Staples can close, and with those stores closing, what happens to the post office if Staples follows that trend? The security of the mail must prevail. The post office is part of the Constitution. The USPS finally handed over the agreement with Staples just before executives testified at an April hearing before the National Labor Relations Board. But the 58-page agreement was so heavily censored that the deal continued to be shrouded in secrecy. Mr. Dimonstein, good to have you with us tonight. Most of the deal was kept secret, and the United States Postal Service was forced to turn over documents about the deal uh, after a hearing before the National Labor Relations Board. What were they hiding? Well, what they're basically hiding, Ed, is that they're really not doing this deal to enhance services to the people of this country, which we are for as the American Postal Workers Union. What the documents reflected is that they're really uh, putting these postal units in staples to lower wages. And that's what their document said. It's a smoking gun document. On April 24th, the organizing effort paid off as the American Postal Workers Union led Stop Staples actions at 56 locations in 27 states. Alliances had been built in city after city with other unions, community organizations, local elected officials, and of course, APWU members themselves. With a local flair and plenty of creativity, the APWU and the community were speaking as one. Join with the postal worker unions, ever union. We are going to fight this contracting out of vital government services. This is only a way to take good jobs away and reduce the security of postal service. We don't want to turn it over to privateers that are going to use it and abuse it in the future. We take an oath to protect the mail. And we take that oath very seriously. So we stand here today in solidarity. Stop staples, stop outsourcing, stop privatization, stop the race to the bottom. It's now time, sisters and brothers, to take our business elsewhere. Yes! Because they haven't heard us yet. Yeah. Yeah. Staples employees aren't properly trained and that your mail could be at risk. The protests received extensive media coverage including over 1,000 television reports and widespread radio, online, and print stories. As news of the April 24th action reverberated in the media, 30 members of the U.S. House of Representatives from California called on Postmaster General Donahoe to reject the program. The Don't Buy Staples campaign began to take off. The first union to respond was the California Federation of Teachers, soon followed by other teacher organizations, key allies in the fight. The Don't Buy campaign got its next big boost when the national AFL-CIO signed on to the boycott of the office supply chain. The Labor Federation is comprised of 56 unions, representing 12.5 million members. 
This support was soon followed by several other state affiliates of the American Federation of Teachers. The Coalition of Black Trade Unionists jumped on board, as did National Nurses United, a growing list of AFL-CIO labor councils, local and statewide union organizations, SEIU, and the American Federation of Teachers. Some very encouraging signs that we're getting to Staples with this campaign and they're beginning to crumble. One, they gave a million dollars to charity for teachers to buy office supplies for children to try to counter the teacher's support for the boycott. Two is they've increased all around the country the Staples coupons trying to bring people into their stores, which is also trying to counter this campaign. And most importantly, they felt compelled to use a, a, a form of trickery to change the name of the pilot from retail partner to approved shipper. And we say if it looks like a duck, if it walks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, it is a duck. And the post office themselves have admitted to their customers that this new pilot, renamed pilot, is one that the, the customers can still get their postal products at Staples. The union cannot and will not sit by to see living wage jobs shifted into poverty wage jobs. We're defending the people's right to the right kind of service. We're also defending the workers' right and our community's right to have decent jobs that not only are good for workers and their families, but are good for our neighborhoods and our towns and our cities. The attack on the United States Postal Service is part of a much larger picture. Social and economic stability for many has been replaced by a grim austerity for all but the 1%. APWU members are truly not alone. The APWU and its sister postal unions are at the center of a storm engulfing working people in the U.S. and worldwide. Our own fight against an artificial financial crisis is the same as the worldwide fight against the logic of austerity that seeks to dismantle public services and social benefits in country after country. The constant threat to our jobs is the same threat faced by countless private sector workers in industry after industry. The attacks on our union and our rights is the same as the attacks on workers' rights everywhere especially public sector workers, who also face the same constant drumbeat of outsourcing and job loss as postal workers. And the fight to preserve good postal service jobs is the same as the fight for living wages, dignity, and justice for low-wage workers. We cannot win our struggle if we ignore theirs. Our nation is at a crossroads. The road ahead won't be easy, but there is a road a road built by our people, working people, immigrants, men and women, and people of all colors. A road built together in one spirit, with one principle. The road of unity, understanding, determination, and mutual support. The road of solidarity. When the union's inspiration through the workers' blood should run, there can be no power greater any whip beneath the sun. Yeah, what force on earth is weaker than the feeble strength of one? So keep it blasting through the speaker, let it ring throughout the slum. Ain't a thing we hold in common with these greedy parasites who would lash us in the surf, then we would crush us with their might. We gotta get it, get it poppin', we gotta organize and fight. Pushing back and never stopping through the union, we get right. Solidarity forever.